On the 1st of June 1973, King Constantine II of Greece was deposed as the last king of Greece by the military committee which had ascended to power six years earlier. The colonels who were effectively in charge of the country from that point on had determined that Constantine was involved in a new attempted at coup by the Greek navy commanders in May 1973 and so they deposed him and abolished the monarchy. Constantine's removal as king of Greece brought to an end a long period in the history of the Balkans during which most of the newly formed states of the region, countries like Greece, Bulgaria, Yugoslavia and Romania were ruled by monarchs as head of state. And yet in the period between the Second World War and Constantine's deposition in 1973, monarchies were brought to an end across the Balkans. Here we chart the story by looking at three of the kings who lost their thrones during this period, Peter II of Yugoslavia, Simeon II of Bulgaria, and Constantine II of Greece. Before examining how these three Balkan kings lost their thrones, let's just briefly look at how these countries came to be monarchies in the first place. The Balkans has long been dominated by foreign powers. Over 2,000 years ago, the Romans conquered the region. Then when the Western Roman Empire collapsed in the 5th century AD, the Eastern Roman Empire or the Byzantine Empire consolidated its control over the Eastern Mediterranean, the Balkans included. For a time in the High Middle Ages, parts of the Balkans attained independence. For instance, between 1217 and 1346, the Kingdom of Serbia was ruled by the Nemanjic dynasty. However, it was soon conquered by the rising Ottoman Empire, which between the 14th and 16th century emerged out of Turkey and conquered most of the Balkans, as well as a vast stretch of land in North Africa and the Middle East. The situation pertained until the early 19th century, by which time the Ottoman Empire was in terminal decline. Taking advantage of this, Greek revolutionaries launched a war of independence in 1821, one which would eventually result in an independent Greek state in 1829. Three years later, a monarchy was established there, one which would persist with just some brief interruptions until the 20th century. Greece was just the first new state in the Balkans. In the 1870s, the Serbs to the north launched their own war of independence, and following the Congress of Berlin, an independent Serbia was recognized internationally in 1878. Four years later, Prince Milan of Serbia became King of Serbia, and in 1918, when the Serbian state was expanded into Yugoslavia, the monarchy was retained. Finally, Bulgaria achieved independence from the Ottoman Empire in 1908, following which Prince Ferdinand of Bulgaria was proclaimed Tsar of Bulgaria. One thing noteworthy about these new Balkan monarchies is that the ruling families were generally foreigners. While the Serb princes were natives of the region, Tsar Ferdinand I of Bulgaria was actually a German prince, while Greece went through several royal lines from the 1830s onwards, who were from Germany and Denmark. This would play a role in affairs later on when these monarchies came to an end. Peter II of Yugoslavia was born on the 6th of September 1923 in the Old Royal Palace in Belgrade the capital of Yugoslavia, or what was also known as the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes. He was the eldest son and heir of King Alexander I of Yugoslavia. As such, he was destined to become King of Yugoslavia himself one day, but this time came sooner than expected when Peter's father, King Alexander, was assassinated in the autumn of 1934. This occurred during a royal visit to Marseille in France when Alexander was shot by Vlado Chernosemsky, a member of the internal Macedonian revolutionary organization which aimed to establish an independent Macedonian state. Thus, Peter ascended as king of Yugoslavia at just 11 years of age. Owing to his youth, a regency council was established to govern Yugoslavia on behalf until he came of age. 
This Regency government was headed by Peter's cousin, Prince Paul, and the situation pertained down to the outbreak of the Second World War in September 1939. Peter's removal as king of Yugoslavia was a direct result of the Second World War. When the conflict erupted, Yugoslavia remained a neutral party for some time. The country was far enough away from Germany so that the Nazis did not try to seize their territory. At the same time, it did not have any close ties to Britain and France. However, Yugoslavia's neutrality became increasingly untenable following the swift German conquest of much of Europe in late 1939 and 1940. As a result of this, in the late 1940s and early 1941, numerous smaller European powers began joining the Tripartite Pact, which Germany had formed with Italy and the Empire of Japan. Hungary and Romania, for instance, joined in November 1940. When Bulgaria did likewise on the 1st of March 1941, Prince Paul, who was still the real power in Yugoslavia, despite the fact that King Peter was now 17 years old, decided to throw in his lot with the Axis powers as well. Thus, on the 25th of March 1941, Yugoslavia joined the Tripartite Pact. However, unlike in Romania, Hungary, and Bulgaria, Paul's effort to bring Yugoslavia into the Nazi camp did not go unopposed. Just two days later, a coup d'état was launched by one of the senior commanders of the Yugoslav Air Force, General Dusan Simović. Simović overthrew Prince Paul and convinced King Peter to finally assume control over the government in his own right. The coup was supported by foreign agents from Britain who wished to prevent Yugoslavia from falling into Nazi camp. Simović became the new prime minister. Nevertheless, while the coup led Peter to establish himself properly as the king of Yugoslavia, it also laid the seeds of his downfall. Just 10 days later, on the 6th of April, 1941, the Germans with allied forces from Italy, Romania, Hungary and Bulgaria invaded Yugoslavia in response to the pro-British coup. The country was quickly overrun and was under Axis control in less than two weeks. Peter, Simović and other leaders of the coup fled to Britain and spent the remainder of the war as the head of nominal government in exile. However, Peter would never return to re-establish himself as king. Instead, the Yugoslav resistance movement in the final years of the war coalesced around the Yugoslav communists and their leader Josep Tito. Thus, as Axis control of the Balkans collapsed in 1944 and 1945, Tito and his partisans with aid from the Soviet Union seized power in Belgrade. Following the end of hostilities in Europe, the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia was established. When the first post-war elections were held on the 11th of November 1945, the Constituent Assembly voted to abolish the monarchy, formalizing Peter's deposition on the 29th of November. Tito went on to rule Yugoslavia for the next three and a half decades down to his death in 1980. Peter and his wife, Alexandra, variously lived between France and the United States from the mid-1940s onwards. His years in exile were spent entertaining vague schemes by Yugoslav dissidents to overthrow the communist regime back home and re-establish the monarchy, and Peter never fully gave up hope of returning home. However, throughout the 1950s and 1960s, he was also an increasingly impoverished individual who suffered from depression and alcohol. The latter finally killed him in 1970 at just 47 years of age, owing to liver cirrhosis. If Peter II can be said to have only ever played a bit part in ruling Yugoslavia owing to his young age when ascending to the throne, the same is even more true to say about Tsar Simeon II of Bulgaria. Simeon was born on the 16th of June, 1937. As such, his second birthday had only just come and gone when the Second World War broke out. At the time, his father, Tsar Boris III, was the ruler of Bulgaria and had been so since 1918. 
As with Yugoslavia, Bulgaria initially remained neutral in the conflict. But in the course of the 1940s, it became apparent that it could not remain so for much longer. Accordingly, in March 1941, Bulgaria joined the Tripartite Pact, though unlike Romania to the north, it was a hesitant supporter of the Nazis and refused to partake in the German invasion of the Soviet Union later that year. Simeon was oblivious to all of this, as indeed he largely was of becoming Tsar of Bulgaria in August 1943 when he just turned six after his father died of a heart attack. A regency government was established on his behalf and it was under its remit that Bulgaria was invaded and quickly conquered by the Soviet Union in the autumn of 1944. In the aftermath of the war, Bulgaria was formed into a communist satellite state of the Soviet Union. As communist ideology was staunchly anti-monarchical, it was only a matter of time before the Bulgarian monarchy was extinguished an event which finally occurred in September 1946 following a referendum. Simeon and the rest of the royal family were exiled from Bulgaria just days later. He subsequently spent much of his early life in Italy and Spain. Yet Simeon's life story has a curious postscript. Following the collapse of the Communist People's Republic of Bulgaria in the early 1990s, Simeon returned to his homeland and in 1996 formed the political party, the Movement for Stability and Progress. After winning a national election in 2001, he became Prime Minister of Bulgaria, thus in his mid-60s becoming the leader of a country which had deposed him as its king 55 years earlier. Simeon is one of only two heads of state from the era of the Second World War who is still alive in early 2023. And so we return to Constantine II of Greece, who we saw being deposed at the beginning. Constantine was born a few years after Simeon, on the 2nd of June 1940. The Greek monarchy had only been restored in 1935 after a period of just over a decade in which Greece temporarily became a republic. A referendum had led to the reaccession as king of George II, Constantine's uncle, in 1935. The monarchy's survival in Greece was again called into question during the Second World War when Constantine was just an infant as the country was taken over by the Axis powers and the royal family was forced to flee into exile. In the aftermath of the conflict, despite the fact that the royal family, known as the House of Glücksburg, was effectively a foreign dynasty from Denmark, the Greek people voted narrowly to restore the monarchy again in 1946. Thus, George reascended to the throne again. On this third attempt, he only lasted one year before he died. He had no children and so he was succeeded by his brother Paul, Constantine's father. As a result, Constantine became crown prince at just six years of age. As he grew up, he excelled as a sailor and in 1960 won a gold medal in a competitive sailing at the Olympic Games in Rome. Four years later, he ascended as King Constantine II of Greece following the death of his father. Constantine's reign was dodged by instability. Greece had long been divided between left and right-wing political parties and groups. This culminated in 1967 in a coup which brought a military junta to power, one which sought to curb the rise of left-wing forces and keep Greece firmly outside of the communist bloc. Constantine remained king of Greece following the establishment of the regime of the colonels as it was known, but he was nothing more than a puppet head of state and the power laid within the military. As we saw at the beginning, this situation only lasted until 1973 when the junta, whose hold on power was increasingly tenuous, deposed him on the back of suspicions, which were largely unfounded. They claimed that he had been involved in an attempt to overthrow the junta. Constantine left Greece for Italy and later relocated to the United Kingdom. The junta did not outlast him by very long. 
Following the Turkish invasion of Cyprus in the summer of 1974, its hold on power in Greece collapsed and a new republic, known as the Third Hellenic Republic, was established after a new referendum. Constantine involved himself in a plot between 1975 and 1978 to overthrow the republic and have himself re-established as the Greek head of state, but this came to nothing. Thereafter, he settled into a long retirement in London before briefly returning to Athens later in his life. There, Constantine died just a few weeks ago at the age of 82. The fall of the monarchy in Greece is the end of the story of the Balkan century and a half long affection for the monarchical rule. Countries like Greece, Bulgaria and Romania are all parliamentary republics today. And when Yugoslavia fragmented into seven different countries as a result of the Yugoslav wars of the 1990s, each of those successor states, Serbia, Croatia, Slovenia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Montenegro, Kosovo and North Macedonia elected to become republics as well. Thus, while there are still 12 states in Europe today which are constitutional monarchies, none of them are found in the Balkans.